Pack-in video games were a staple of consoles and handhelds in the 80s and 90s, helping create some of the best-selling games ever and introducing millions of fans to some legendary titles. They also did a great job of showing off the features and gimmicks of the hardware, usually by design. Packing games were packed in with a console, meaning that new owners had something to play right from the get-go, giving players a chance to fall immediately in love with their big new expensive purchase. Now let's be clear up front, however, that pack-in games are distinct from bundled games. As consoles get later into their lifespan and manufacturers try to shift more units, they'll start bundling hardware with other games just to sweeten the deal. That's good, to be clear, but it's a different thing entirely. Instead, we're talking about games that were included with the main release of the standard edition of consoles. As a result, famous hardware such as the original PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch will not feature on this list, as those cheapskates decided we'd have to buy games for ourselves. The nerve! Still, plenty of consoles have been a bit more generous at launch, or near launch, so let's take a look at some of their best packing games right now. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best pack-in games of all time. Number 10. Pole Position 2 – Atari 7800 The sequel to extremely popular racer Pole Position, Pole Position 2 was a beloved game in its own right, perhaps even more so. Beginning life in arcades, this sequel put players behind the wheel of a race car and let them tear around four different tracks. We're not joking either, four tracks constituted a big deal back then. The game was also praised for bringing a real sense of speed and excitement to each race, something that those who bought the Atari 7800 can attest to. The home port of Pole Position 2 was packed in with the console, and it managed to maintain the high-octane action of its arcade counterpart. It may look a bit primitive by today's standards, but in 1986, it was genuinely difficult to do better. Whilst the original Pole Position might get all the praise for being one of the first real racing games, its follow-up did an amazing job building on those foundations and helped establish the genre as one of gaming's mainstays. Number 9. Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt DS This one is a little tricky, as it's not technically a game, but rather a demo of a game that would eventually be released in 2006. Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt was a pack-in for the newly released Nintendo DS, giving players a glimpse at the upcoming Metroid Prime Hunters, which was sadly not a game about Samus tracking down her next day deliveries from Amazon. The demo basically acts as a training mission ahead of the full game, getting players used to surviving enemies, firing weapons, and going full hamster when using the Morph Ball. There's also a local multiplayer mode in which you and up to four friends can enjoy blasting each other to bits with high-powered laser beams. Good wholesome fun for the whole family. Whilst it was hardly a reason to buy a DS, First Hunt was a great showcase of the handheld's abilities and sufficiently wet Metroid fans' whistles. Mainly, though, we're just glad that the DS came with something to play right away. There's only so many horrifying pictures you can send your siblings on PictoChat before you get bored. Number 8. Gex 3DO the 3DO may not be remembered by many gamers today, but it had quite an interesting history. The 3DO company would license out its specifications to third-party developers, meaning that a 3DO could be made by anybody if they had the cash. The console, however, was massively overpriced and vanished from shelves after just three years. If you did save up all your pocket money, mortgage your house, and sell a kidney to buy a Panasonic 3DO in 1995, then you would have been treated to a copy of Gex. The first game to feature the TV-loving Gecko was an instant hit among platformer fans, with many predicting that the title character would reach the same heights as Mario and Sonic in the future. This didn't happen, but Gex was still praised for its beautiful graphics and gameplay, and it spawned two sequels. Also, you could argue that 3DO players got the best Gex experience available. They got to play the game months before it was available on the PlayStation or Sega Saturn, and their version of the game was actually the best received among critics. Then again, the best version of Gex might not be saying all that much. Number 7. Hang On – Master System Hang On is a motorbike racing game in which players steer their chosen choppers around a linear track against the clock, hitting checkpoints to give themselves more time. It was one of the most popular arcade cabinets of the mid-80s, earning fans through its realism, control scheme, and the fact that you can race through what seems to be some sort of post-apocalyptic desert. Not sure if that's what Sega was going for, but that's my headcanon now. Speaking of Sega, when they released their Master System in the United States in 1986, it came with a choice of two, count them, two different package options. With one, you got a copy of Safari Hunt, a fairly boring light gun game, and with the other, you got a copy of Astro Warrior, a slightly less boring spaceship game. Thankfully for Master System early adopters, both options also came with Hang On, so they could take a high-speed break from shooting animals or uh, giant killer chandeliers. Yeah, I'll stick with a motorcycle one, thank you. Number 6. Namco Museum Collection 1 – Evercade 
The Evercade is a paradise for people who like their gameplay simple, their graphics pixely, and their soundtracks bit bitty. I'm not sure how much of what I just said was grammatically correct, but you get the point. A haven for retro game fans, the Evercade handheld offers a range of cartridges, each containing as many as 20 different classic titles, including Libble Rabble, Splatterhouse 2, Power Pigs of the Dark Ages, Boogerman, A Pick and Flick Adventure, and others with equally silly names. Whilst the premium edition of the console comes with three different cartridges, the standard edition comes with just one. Thankfully, that cartridge, Namco Museum Collection 1, is stuffed with the likes of Battle Cars, Dig Dug, and a little-known title called Pac-Man. Ok, so having Pac-Man as a pack-in doesn't sound that impressive in this day and age, but hey, if you've been frozen in a block of ice since 1983, then you'll probably think the Evercade is the greatest thing ever invented. And even if you haven't been, it's still really fun. You should get one. Number 5. Astro's Playroom PlayStation 5 Considering that launch PS5s were harder to find than the Holy Grail, it's fair enough that players who did get a hold of one got a little extra bang for their buck. Astro's Playroom was available for free with every new system, and boy, did players get their money's worth. Actually, that sounds like damning with faint praise. We think it's great. Honest. That still sounded sarcastic. Astro's Playroom let players pilot an adorable robot through a world designed around classic PlayStation franchises of old. It also served as a handy tech demo for the new DualSense controller, letting players get to grips with the new tech in a fun and engaging way. It gave them plenty of time to practice before they used the controller in other games. Astro's Playroom received a lot of love from critics and fans. Also, the secret world at the end. We won't spoil it, but if you're an old school PlayStation fan, trust me, you're gonna love it. Number 4. Wii Sports. Wii. For those who don't know, which I assume is nobody but I have to do my due diligence, Wii Sports is a cartoony minigame collection that let players participate in golf, boxing, tennis, baseball, and bowling, either against their friends in light-hearted competition or a battle to the death with a CPU called Matt. It was exactly the sort of game that could be picked up and played straight away with anyone, anywhere. It was so inclusive and enjoyable that there was zero barrier to entry, meaning that players could get stuck into their new console right away. It took no time at all for Wii Sports to become a must-have game, which in turn made the Wii a must-have console. The two are synonymous now, and that's not because the game has the word Wii in the title. That helps, but it's not the full reason, we promise. The video game equivalent of peanut butter and jelly, or peanut butter and jam if you want to get British about this, packing Wii Sports in with the Wii was a stroke of genius. That's a golf joke. What do you mean that's your least favourite sport? That's it. Once I'm done with Matt, you're next. Number 3. Sonic the Hedgehog. Mega Drive. Anyone who bought a Sega Mega Drive or Genesis before 1991 would have been sorely disappointed with their pack in title. Before the blue blur zipped his way into the console's bundle, Sega fans had to contend with a copy of Altered Beast as their free gift. That game was guilty of one major crime, though it wasn't Sonic the Hedgehog. The original Sonic game was a revelation, bringing a sense of speed never before seen in gaming. It was also praised for its graphics, level design, music, and for being Sega's first real contender to Mario's crown. Or Red Cap, I suppose. The decision to replace Altered Beast with Sonic seems pretty obvious in retrospect. At the time, however, how could Sega possibly know that giving players a great game was better than giving them a digital pile of poo? Actually, Sega, maybe it was quite obvious then as well. Regardless, Sonic's inclusion ultimately turned a generation of young players into die-hard fans and is credited with helping to secure Sega's 65% of the market share against Nintendo. I'd say I'd feel sorry for Altered Beast, but it's hard to take pity on a game with a lead character who looks like this. Number 2. Super Mario World SNES It didn't quite hit the top of our Every Mario Game Ranked list, but there's a strong case to be made that 1990's Super Mario World is the greatest Mario game ever made. Not only did it refine the Mario formula with its graphics, music, and level design, it also introduced brand new mechanics to the series, such as the ability to store extra power-ups and optional worlds. There's also the small matter of this being the first Mario game to feature Yoshi. Look at him go. Oh dear god, Yoshi, I'm so sorry! It was also the first Mario title for the SNES, and the new hardware meant that Nintendo could make serious improvements to everything from graphics to the music. As a result, Super Mario World was a huge success and became the best-selling SNES title of all time. It's also the favourite Mario game of series creator Shigeru Miyamoto, as he revealed in an interview in 2012. Wait, I thought parents weren't meant to have favourites. Number 1. Tetris – Game Boy One of the best-selling and most influential games of all time on one of the best-selling and most influential handhelds of all time? Would have been fools not to put Tetris for the Game Boy at the top of this list. Tetris is all about blocks. Fitting blocks together, making blocks disappear, and screaming in fear as blocks pile higher and higher. Sounds simple, right? 
correct. And that's the beauty of it. Not only was Tetris addictive and easy to play, but the Game Boy version was also the first to feature a two-player mode. This made it the perfect game to show off one of the Game Boy's most famous features, the link cable. In total, Tetris pulled in sales of 35 million copies and helped to sell almost 120 million units of hardware, which is, for those not good at maths, an absolute butt-ton of sales for the big N. It is impossible to think of Tetris without the Game Boy, and vice versa, as each was so integral to the other's success. Without either of them, gaming would look very different today. It would definitely look less blocky, that's for sure.